listen up. It's the number one voice of the Tri-State. I'm number one. It, it, it's, it's, it's cooking, cooking up 215. So let the show begin. Here we Y'all already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth, and this is Cooking Up 215, where we get you up close and personal with your favorite artists, entrepreneurs, shakers, and move makers. And today's guest, we have someone special. Me? Miss Nina, say what? Oh, yes, hi. Thank you. thank you so much for joining us. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, hi, special. everyone in the set. Hi, hi, hi. You know, <laughs> you're a major voice in the city. You've been on Power 99 about 12 years or in radio? I was on Power for six years. For six years? Yeah, and then I've been with 100.3 five years. Five years? Yeah. It's been five? Yeah, it's about to be five in September. I feel like that. I feel like I'm getting old because I feel like it was just <laughs> yesterday I was hearing you on Power 99. So that's that's crazy. Yeah. That five years flew by. I left uh, Power 99 in the beginning of 2018. Okay. So I would say like December 2017 at the top of the year I left. And then I started working with Radio 1, which is 100.3. Um, mm. There was another station, 103.9. Do you remember that, that yeah, dial? I, remember I was on 103.9 uh, maybe six months after I left Power. Okay. And then I ended up going over to 100.3 like a year after. Mm. Yeah. So was it a reason for leaving Power 99? My contract stuff. I was a okay. part of a morning show. Uh, mm. When I joined the show, I was 25. Right. So I was actually like the youngest show host i was actually the youngest on-air staff member that's crazy so i joined the morning show it was like a good opportunity to like you know move up in my career and right. and do morning radio and radio a lot of people that's like the main thing mm -hmm. like morning radio is like where you can make the more, most yeah, that's, money that's like the top the so it was a good opportunity in. and i took it but then when i was there i'm like okay well they said, I don't want to do this forever. Right. You know, so I... you're not I, really a morning person, right? You don't I like hated morning. being... I hated mornings because of that. I yeah. was never... I would be out late to like 12, 1 o'clock. I got to be at work at 6. Try that. Yeah, that's a hard body. <laughs> you know, so it's like... Because I'm very social, so I was always out. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. The schedule was definitely hard on me. And then I didn't just have like the morning show job. I also was like the digital manager as well. Mm. So after, when all everybody else, all my co-hosts would go home at 10, 10 30, I was still there till like two, three o'clock, working all day. Mm. So it was hard. After I, I would say I started to get like run down after like the third year. Right. Um, I signed three two-year contracts. Okay. So it was two, two, and two. So in the middle of my second contract, I was already starting to feel like, okay. This is it. And then going into my last contract, I actually almost didn't even sign. But, you know, I ended up signing the contract. And, uh, you know, I, I started to feel like this is coming to an end. I yeah. just didn't know what else to do. It was like the scaredness yeah. of what do I do after this? Because when you're on the contract, you can't talk to other people. You can't be like, yo, my contract is about to be up. You can for a new right. job. It's, so. a, it's in your contract not to like kind of have conversations with other people. Right. So it was scary for me to think like my contract is over. I'm just going to be out here. Where am I going to go? What am I going right. to do? I security. can't line anything up. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, that the last two years was very difficult. The last two years was like I grew a lot, mm -hmm. but it was the most difficult for me just because I was already starting to feel like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Mornings is cool, but I think after having that on my resume for four or five years, I'm good. Right. And so what's you, the next thing? You also were trying to get with Hot 97 at, at some point. Like you were cool with Ebro. And you were I was, but there. the contract thing never aligned. Like okay. I think the I think going into that last year was so hard for me because I think in the I lied that last those last two years mm -hmm. going into that contract. I reluctantly signed my contract, and it's crazy when they say trust your gut. Cause literally like weeks after that, the whole Hot 97 thing exploded. Like mm -hmm. Angie left, she's afternoons, Dennis left, that's right. middays. That's, that doesn't happen in New York radio where two people live, leave, leave at the same situation. time in a big day part. So I really went through a moment like, damn, I made the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. Like something was telling me this, you know, th it, I don't do this, but it was the fear of, well, what else am I gonna do? What opportunity right. is open? So I went ahead and I signed the contract, but look at what happened. Weeks later, there was a, a midday position, uh, afternoon position. And all these things opened And I up. couldn't even do anything because I was stuck. And you can't even talk because now you're in the contract. Yeah. That's crazy. It was rough for me. I didn't know they worked it like that. It's like, that make it kind of hard to 
start maneuvering and, and setting your moves in place. Yeah. yeah. And most contracts, like, have non-competes, too. Right. What that means is you can't even talk to or work team. anywhere. Yeah, right. You can't talk to no one, but then you can't work anywhere for a certain amount of years. So in your negotiations, you try to, like, change work that. that. Yeah. But it's like you have so... you They give you this contract, and the contract look crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like 10, 15 things, and you're like, this crazy, this crazy, that's crazy, I'm not doing that. But when you come down to negotiating, it's like, what crazy do you get at? You know, yeah. you got to, like, kind of, like, start tearing it up. Like, these are my top things that I definitely that I need, need changed. Right. And if they don't change it, then I'm not doing it. Like, right. these are my... Nah, this is... This is my heart like these are my my kind of like it's no it's yes or no on these yeah. like my non-negotiables non how about right. that my non-negotiables and then these things are kind of things that I, I'm I need to be leaning on because realistically when you go into negotiating a contract yeah you want all the crazy things out the contract right. but I'm not Beyonce yeah you know <laughs> like you gotta Beyonce have, can go in and be and Rihanna like nah you know you gotta like, have a little weight right you gotta have some, right some, and some, at that point I'm my 20s you know like I'm still building I don't I don't have that weight to be like right. nah I'm not doing that right. because at that point you gotta be ready to walk away exactly and, and can you really walk away do you have the name away. to walk away and stand on your own and do it on your own and get another position that's right. better right and that's how artists are too like when right. you sign with your label you know like mm -hmm. are you do you have the solo following do, are you that popular. connected popular mm -hmm. you know uh do you have enough cachet enough enough power exactly. to be like peace and then go to a next situation. Because that's when you really find out where your power is at. Right. You think you got power. Then you leave the big structure. Man, and you out same. on your own. And you're like, damn. Hey, I ain't got up. no fans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody coming people to my show. the phone like they right, used to. No, oh, you dropped from the label? Yeah. Oh, now people used to call you all the time and they calling you, you. They treat you differently. It's, it's hard leaving a really comfortable situation. Right. So I was in my 20s and like. I was so proud that I had gotten to that point in my life mm -hmm. where I could be in that space at such a young age. Right. I'm so, like, my counterparts are in their 40s, yeah. you know, like, I got here fast. Yeah. The crazy part, you initially, was was music the plan at first? Because I know you went to Syracuse and you just was hanging around with your DJ friends and they would have you come to the station and that's where you found your love for it. Yeah. But before you found that love, was that this thought when you was going to Syracuse, did you plan on being a radio? So I always loved music. I since I was a kid, I would before <laughs> you remember back in the day they used to put the lyrics on the back of yeah, the cassette. Yeah, you could read it. Because as when I was a kid, I, I remember like I had maybe two cassettes before they transitioned into CDs. Because when they were transitioning from cassettes to CDs. It's like only people with money had the CDs, right? Mm. So my family members still had a couple little cassettes <laughs> yeah. lying around. Like they didn't make the transition all the way. Yeah. It's the same way when you went from CDs to MP3s. Like Thanks. MP3s was something that was more like technologically advanced. So some people still, it was still people that still middle area, CD, yeah. right? And when I was in college, there was a lot of people still on CDs. I was already on MP3s. I was already on that. Like I was already on the next mm. wave. So I think like... Music was always my thing. I used to read all the lyrics. I used to memorize raps and write them down. You know, that's like, dope. that was always my thing. I just didn't think it was going to be a career. Right. You know, and, like, I think that's a lot, a lot of, like, mistakes that people make sometimes. Like, they think hobbies are careers mm -hmm. when it's not, you know, or the other way around other in way my around. position. I didn't think this was a career. You thought it was a that hobby. Is, I thought this was a hobby, a right. So I think it goes both ways. But for me, like, I always had a love and passion for music. I used to play a lot of video games when I was growing up. And I used to listen to, like, Missy Elliott on, like, yeah. repeat. And had yeah. no business. I was too young. Talk about <laughs> break me up. Show me what you got. That's yeah, I know music, I, do No one minute, man. I'm, like, 10 and yeah. <laughs> I have no business listening to one minute, man. That's how we were. <laughs> right. right. Running around singing all the songs. Right. Thinking you grown, dancing. So I think team, music man. was always like in my blood and my love for music. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to stumble on people that already were doing music as a business mm. in school and then uh, as a career. And then um, it kind of just went from there. I'm the kind of person when I lock in on something, I, I get it, it done. Right. So name, once I said I'm doing this, it, I was it. doing it. It was on. Yeah. And your name 
Mean to say what? You got that from the De La Soul song? Yeah. That's super dope. So you music all the way around. Yeah, like I didn't. Well, De La Soul was a little bit it. before me. Uh -huh. So I remember when I was young, people used to sing the song to me, and I didn't understand. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I just didn't know. Yeah. But when I got older, I was like, what should my name be? And I remember like kind of throwing a couple of things around. And at the time, I had just started working at Sirius XM. And I was like transitioning from college. It was like my first job. Mm -hmm. And Envy used to actually work there. And I remember running it by Envy, like, what you think of his name? Like, Mina say what? He was like, nah, that's fire, go. So I was like, okay. Yeah. It's wild how like interwoven like radio is. Yeah, well, I when I interned at 197, it's funny, before I was Ebro's intern, I wanted to be Angie's intern so bad. Mm. And she had a producer named Monse. And I used to like email Monse and like harass him. Never got no response from Monse, right? <laughs> but then I started to email harass everybody. <laughs> so yeah. I started uh, Miss Jones, who went to Syracuse, ironically, the same school I went to. I didn't know this at the time, but she was an alum. So I found out later that she was an, an alum. So I started harassing her. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, we're alums, hello. Yeah. So I ended up having an interview to intern for her show. And that's when I first met Envy. Mm. I was a freshman. It was uh, the summer of my freshman year. So by, like I told you, when I want to do something, I'll go you ahead go and do it. it. Yeah. So my, at the end of my freshman year, I decided I was just going to switch. I, I had like an undecided major. I thought I was going to be like a lawyer or something, or I had um, a political science major. That's crazy. That was like, I was already taking classes for that. So, um. That's straight total opposite. Than, not than, really. Uh, it's very, you, it, c lawyering is a communications field. Okay. You got to know your contracts. Didn't we just talk about contracts? <laughs> um, and I didn't want to be like a, I wanted to be like an entertainment lawyer, like a, you know, like a, I wanted to be a lawyer. I just didn't know how mm -hmm. with like what field yet. Mm -hmm. So at the end, I committed. I was like, all right, I'm going to do the communications thing. I'm going I'm to take all the classes by the end of my freshman year because I started radio like my first semester of freshman year. Mm -hmm. I started like with the college radio. With the college radio. Yeah. Right. So I committed to it. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to get interns. It wasn't even my job, my time to get interns yet. Like <laughs> you're supposed to get internships in a junior year. And I was already like at the end of my, my freshman year, like, well, I'm getting an internship. Yeah, yeah. Every summer, I'm going to be somewhere different. So I was trying every summer. I didn't have one. First summer, I tried Angie. Nothing. Second summer, I tried Miss Jones. I got, and she was doing the morning show at 197 at the time. And Envy was on that morning show. Mm. So he was like the side character to that morning show be before, before he, he went on the, on the Breakfast Club. Right. So, um, and then it's funny. Jonesy used to be the side character to starring Buck Wild. So it was like... It's That's always crazy. like yeah. you don't notice how people really put into Work their craft yeah. before they go off and do their own you thing. Think they just got this top position nah. and they've been there. Jonesy they was doing uh, stuff with Star and Buck, but it was their show, uh -huh. right? And then Jonesy got her own show after that. And then Envy was doing kind of like, you know, the contribute, he contributes to but his sh her show, mm -hmm. he contributes to the show. And then he got his own thing. So, you know, people yeah. put in a lot of work for years that people don't see on the outside. But behind the scenes, they put in a lot of work for a long time before they even get that opportunity. Because really when you get ranks. that big opportunity, you got to be ready for it or else Thanks. you're not going to keep it. So a lot of these True. people that stay in these positions, I mean, I think Envy's been on that show for 15 years now. Yeah. Because I've been here in this market now already 11 years. Yeah, uh, it's been 11 years. The, your anniversary, yeah. your radio anniversary was the other day, right? Right, so mm. I started at Sirius XM, so I have four years before I even got here. Mm. So I was working up there for four years before I got here. So um, I, I worked for Sirius XM for four years, and then I was at... So I've been in Philly on air 11 years. Mm. And I remember MB and them got their show like a year or two before. So they must be... That Breakfast Club show got to be like... 14 years. Yeah, I think it was, uh, he said, was it 13 years? 13, I think yep, 13, 13 years. years. Yeah. It got to be in. Because I've been in Philly 11 years, and like I said, when I got my morning show job, they had just, they, they've been doing the Breakfast Club for a year. Yeah. So it got to be 12 going on 13 years yeah. that they've been doing they that put, show. They've been putting that time in. Right. But even, remember, for, even before that, Envy was doing the show with Jonesy, yeah. and that's when I met Envy, even before I worked at Sirius XM. Right. I met Envy when he was working on Miss Jones' show. He was, like, the first radio personality I, I ever met. Like, the well, 
in New York. Yeah. Because I was doing stuff in Sy- Syracuse, Syracuse and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I auditioned to be a morning show, or their their intern, and I met Envy that day. I didn't get to be her intern. I wasn't picked. I don't, right. I don't know why. But, but you've been grinding. The next been year, I was like, okay, well, Angie, I can't reach. They didn't want me on their show because they didn't pick me. I'm going to try this one. Yeah. So then I tried uh, the programming internship with Ebro, and I got picked. And you got picked. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't think people understand. I was just having this conversation about how much work goes into getting that, that dream job or that dream position or just getting where you want to go. Like, yeah. You really got to be active and be at it. Like the fact that you were trying to get internships your freshman year when you talking about normal people wait till sophomore, sophomore junior, yeah. you know what I mean? So it just show like you gotta really go at it. And oh, absolutely. it works for you because you was the youngest person at the station. You got your job at 25. Right, And most yeah. people wait, to, they get it 30, 35 yeah. and stuff like well, that. Well, I was working at it. So when right. the position came, obviously there's some things that I had to learn on the fly because mm-hmm. it was a, a position I've never done. Right. But I feel like my talent, I was ready for that. I, 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 when I left at the end of six years, you know, five and, you know, five and five years and uh, nine, nine, ten months. Mm-hmm. When I left, I was, I could do mornings Easy, yeah. <laughs> 25 years from now and I, I would be able to do it. You know, mm-hmm. do I want to? I don't, you know, yeah, not that's now. that's not really what you want to do. Maybe. So what would be your dream position? I don't know. It changes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always changing. Like. You think you have a dream position, you get there, and then you're like, okay, what now? That's a You fact. know, and it was like, you you know, everything is not always what it seems. So it mm-hmm. was like, cool, I want to do mornings. Then you get to mornings, you're like, oh, this is cool, but I kind of want my independence back. I want to do my own stuff. Right. You know, you got to think when you're on a morning show, it's a team. Like, you guys got to agree on interviews. Mm. You know, like, you got to do everything together. I'm the only child. So <laughs> that <laughs> like in itself, I way. was like, I got to be in the room with both of y'all for four hours? Yeah. That's crazy. I never been in a room with anybody for four hours. That's wild. So it was, and I was twenty five. I was out of college, you know. Like, I, I, I don't know. You it, gotta explore. it was an adjustment. You gotta do it was more, an yeah. adjustment for me. I wasn't used to working with people so closely, mm-hmm. like every day together and in the same room. Like I, I can only go and pee, and then I only got ten minutes because commercials is eight to ten minutes. I gotta be back. <laughs> <laughs> like damn, how have I like something's going on, yeah, and I yeah. need more than eight ten minutes. Ate some so, bad noodles right, last night. You're right. <laughs> So, um, but you know, everything is a a learning opportunity and uh, I would not be as good as I am now had I not gone through what I went through there and Mm. what I learned about not just myself as a person, but just how how sharp I got with, you know, my talent. So um, a lot of people in radio, like because of voice tracking and and like being able to pre-record. Right. A lot, you know, some people can't really do live, like they're intimidated by it. You'd be surprised how many people are like, you know, recording their stuff. Yeah. I can do both easily. I didn't know easily. that until I started to like get associated, like I'm cool with Cab, I'm cool with RL. Yeah. So I learned like, you know, RL pre-recorded some of his sets right. and stuff like that. So it was, it really was, damn, I was like, I always thought when you was on the radio, you was on the radio. Right, like, but it's changed right with now. technology. I mean, some people don't even know how to run the board. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, not everybody, but, you know, it's just, it's not how before you need to be able to do everything, you mm-hmm. know? Like, you need to be able to edit your audio, run your board, you know, like, you know how to mic up. So like, now you don't got to do all those type of things. Now you don't because there's technology, there's engineering, you can pre-record. Some people aren't even live, they're pre-recorded, so maybe... Maybe they don't develop that skill, uh, you know, until they start doing a show that requires you to develop that and skill. And you're trying to catch up on the fly. Yeah. Right. So I, uh, that show, we were live every day, 24-7, 365. And it, it really, like, allowed me, like, now I can go live and do anything. I can do yeah. a video thing, you right. know, like, and people are like, whoa, you're a one take, it, for, you it, know. It prepares you for everything. Right. And it's right. like, nah, I'm, it, I'm one take because I prepared for this. You know how many times I messed up on skills. air? People yeah. on Twitter like, get your shit together. <laughs> you know, like, y'all get it. Wake up. You know, get yeah. some coffee. Like, you can't mess up because everybody's, like, on you. Oh, you said the wrong information. Like, damn, I was tired. Yeah. <laughs> Players mess up. <laughs> Can I mess up? What? You have no idea how many people I said one wrong thing and they on Twitter like it, it like getting at me. Oh, like yeah, that's the, not what happened. The internet is relentless. And I'm like, damn, but I, I was tired this morning. The internet is relentless. Yeah. They, they expect perfection no matter how imperfect they are. Right. They expect you to have it right all the time. You do one thing, they point yeah. it out going crazy. But it makes you better. It, so it's exactly. like now I can do either or. Or like even if I am live and I mess up, I know how to make it so it doesn't sound like a mess up. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, so it's like it, 
it made me learn that really well. So I, you can literally throw me in any kind of fire. Like there could be a damn tornado and I'm live on air and nothing and unfazed. Yeah. You know, like if we had a tornado, y'all, <laughs> <laughs> it's 165 miles per hour. The winds are Just 35, chilling. you know, like, so it really prepares you for whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the skill that I took away from that. So now... You know, um, I, I do a little bit of both, and I'm just happy that I have that, you know, that skill. You know how many people are in the radio station like, I want to learn how to use the board. Right. And I'm like, that should have been the first thing you did. You know, like when I learned, that's the first thing you did. You learned how to use the equipment before you even touched the mic, mm. before you even got to speak. You knew how to use you the equipment. Use I come everything. from that school. Right. Now... They learning how to speak and don't know how to use the equipment. Like, yeah. what? How you are here? So you don't know a, how to run the board. It's a disadvantage to it because you don't got all the tools in the toolbox. Right, right, but it comes down to training, right? right? It's not the. It's not their fault. It's who's the person that is allowing you to have this space without preparing you for that space, right? right. So everybody is different, you know. I'm. It, I've learned that with different management styles, you know, you just gotta, you know, all right, well, cool, that's how it is. Everybody don't got the same path. Everyone's not gonna have the path that I have. I had to learn all the technical stuff before I even cracked the mic. Mm -hmm. People are different. You know right. what I'm saying? They have different paths. I don't, I don't look down upon it. You right. know, yeah, I don't. No, you just, you just I, gotta let go. Right, right. At but that uh, point, but that's I, all. but I do see where. Some people that may seem prepared for the moment are not prepared for the moments because they haven't put in the work to learn everything about their craft behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And when you don't put in the work to learn everything about your craft behind the scenes, it will show it at shows. some point. It, it will show. At it some point. It may not show immediately, yeah. but at some point it's, it's going to show. It's going to be like, oh, we got this big breaking news. You telling me you don't know how to go on air yeah. and do this live, yeah, but you, you on when, air? When you get put how, on the spot, it's be bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, there's different little things where, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just different how people come up now, right. but it's, it's, it's not to say anything about them. Right. No, Again, people that don't put in the time into really learning their craft. You just gotta, you gotta, gotta want show. it. If you want it, you're gonna make sure you learn every aspect of your job, period. Right. But so your end dream is to be like in a position like Steve Harvey. Like you want to reach television. I think if like if anything is it, I think Steve Harvey is it. <laughs> he definitely one of those people. He pioneered. He went from TV to yeah. having his own show. But the thing, but like, the thing about Steve is he's not putting himself in a box. That's why you, you say, well, what do you want to do? It's not really that. It's like, well, what opportunity comes around that seems interesting that where I could flex another skill set that I facts. have, like. When I was sitting, um, when I during the pandemic, I started writing for the Philadelphia Tribune, mm -hmm. like actual news stories, right? And um, I remember somebody was like, "Your stories are real good." Like surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a journalist. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I went regardless. to Syracuse University, but that's the thing. I've never done that for as a job, right? right? Like as a job by itself. Mm -hmm. Like I've written articles for radio station websites, you know, like r articles for my own website, right? I'm a, I, you need to be able to write if you're gonna be in the communication field, right? So I could write, you're, I could write an article, sir. Right, I got, I graduated cum laude with two majors and a minor. Right. I know how to write an article <laughs> <laughs> in a journal, from a top journalism school. Right. But it's funny, until you have that title, People don't even see that yeah. from you, right? So during the pandemic, I was sitting there, I started writing and um, I started writing and I did that for like a year, year and a half. Then when I had the baby, I had to step away and I just, I, I could go back right now and write, but I just, I'm trying to find the time to do everything. Right. Well, you gotta, this is new for you. you right. Know? So you gotta learn how to adjust. Yeah, having the put baby. Put your time with the baby yeah. and put your time into your craft and everything like that. But I have that on my resume now. So it's like, it's not a box of like, I wanna do this. It's yeah. like, okay. I have that skill. Like I've done it knife. before. Let me switch up because I have the time. Yeah. Now I have that on my resume. So now I can say I'm a I'm a lifestyle reporter writer. Right. And I literally have the experience to back that up. Yeah. And then say another opportunity comes and you know, and oh, okay, well we need you. Like Sherry Shepard, I wanna work with Sherry Shepard so bad. So bad I wanna work with Sherry. And I interviewed her before, and when I interviewed her at Sirius XM, she was like, man, that was a really good conversation. You're really good at what you do. And she said to me, I bet you you don't even get, like, the props that you should be getting. I was like, well, people like you know this, so that's enough, Sherry. So I'm hoping <laughs> that I rem that she remembers that. So 
So it's like, yo, you know how many times I be in Sherry Shepard's comments? Now you're going to see me. Yo, Sherry, <laughs> let me work for you. Yo, Sherry, let me get your coffee. Yo, Sherry, yeah. let me get your tea. Like, because that's something. First of all, I want to work with her. Second of all, I think the production of her show is incredible. Third of all, I think she's a new talent on daytime TV. She's funny. Mm. You know, she has great, a big personality. Right. And it's like, I want to work with someone like that. Right. So it's like that intrigues and it excites me. So I want to go do that now. So not necessarily like I have this very planned out, like, oh, I want to do this. But it's kind of like, when oh, you see it, I, I think I could that. do that. Let me try to do that. All right, let me do it. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. What's next? Yeah. And that's kind of how it is. So, like, I always had it on my mind where I want to write a book. Have I? No. I, you know, but one, one day. day when I drop my book, it might be 5, 10, 15. Who knows how long it's going to take me? But it's something I always wanted to do in the back of my mind because I know I can, do, can it, do it. Right? All I need is an illustrator to write, you know, yeah. to like p do the pictures you put and your the mind cover to art. It, and now you, you can, can self publish with Kindle and everything. Like, yeah, I've been doing a lot of research easy. behind the scenes of like self publishing your book. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I want to do a book. Am I going to do it right now? No. I wanted to tell people, yeah, I'm a writer. I did it. I'm, I, I'm okay. Now we're on to the next you know mm -hmm. i have an interest in sports you know i've been applying for different sports jobs here and there have i got an opportunity no but the second i get an opportunity like a sports reporter yeah i'll be like all right cool i could do this right so it's like it's not necessarily like you i know exactly yeah, it's like i know that i'm good at certain things and when the opportunity presents itself to me i try those things mm. and that's the only way you're going to know if it's for you or not that's, that's why I be telling kids when I talk to them, like, try different things. Go to different jobs. Yeah. You know, like, and, and like, the way that we are, uh, you know, millennials and, and even younger, we can't get, we, we can't get stuck in one thing. It drives us crazy. Like, back in the day, our parents used to be at the same job for 40 it's years. There's so many options now. Like, it's, it's hard. 40 years? You the, did the same thing? You wasn't yeah. bored? Like, so I can't. Options. So it's like, I was six years at somewhere, like, okay, what am I going to do next? I was like, what am I doing next, you know? Mm. So it's like, I, you know, it's really that. Like, right, I love radio. Radio's always going to be my love. I'm always going to do radio. But I really like how Steve Harvey has been like, okay, I'm going to do radio. Okay, I'm going to go do this TV show. Okay, this don't work. I'm going to go over here and do Family Feud. Ah, this is kind of working. I'll keep this. Let me go over <laughs> here and do this other show. Okay, that While ain't I'm work. I'm going to go yeah. over there. Okay, let me write my book, Think Like a Man you know act like a woman and it's like it, he's doing this yeah. but i don't think steve harvey will sit here and tell you unless he's like uh you know uh he sees the future yeah. but i don't think anybody who is that successful will grow up and say few people let me because some people are visionaries mm -hmm. and they do see their lives all right me it wasn't like i could have told you i'm gonna do that yeah like you have the aspirations but you don't really know how your life is gonna look what happens is People that are successful just keep doing the next thing and they're good at it. Yep. And they do their best at everything the that they do. They come their way and it leads you They take you the opportunities. They put in the time to develop their craft and be good at that craft. And they just keep climbing, climbing. And next thing you know, you look back, you're like, whoa, I did all way. this stuff. Yeah. I didn't even think I was going to do half this stuff. Maybe I thought I was going to do that, but definitely not this. Yeah, that's you know, so it's like... Yeah, did did I did it, would I could I have told you I was gonna be on the radio for fifteen years? No, never seen it. I knew I wanted to be on radio. Yeah, like I always knew that. But fifteen years, and you just worked hard and got you. Fifteen to it. years, a woman, a Latin woman, mm. radio. Fifteen years, opening doors in not in non Latin spaces. Right. It's not like I went and did like you know. It's a different space where people like me are not really prevalent, that look like me are prevalent in those spaces. Mm. And I'm in those spaces right. for 15 years. 15 years, yeah. For, <laughs> you in there at this point. You in so, there. So, and I don't, it's here. funny you say that. I don't feel that way. Don't feel I feel like, like I still have work to do. Like, I still want to work with Sherry Shepard. Yeah. Sherry Shepard, hire me! <laughs> when you aspire for more, you always got work to do. It's like yeah. I learned that success is not, it's not an end goal. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no top to it. Like, that's why a lot of billionaires still working they still yeah. acquiring new assets or getting new investments because there's no you know what i mean you just keep going life keeps life and you just keep on going yeah. seeing where where you can go next thing you know you go from kanye making beats to making sneakers and then you're a billionaire you know what i mean so you i never said know. you know what i wouldn't be surprised if kanye said i knew all this was gonna happen because <laughs> that's he how probably, kanye he is did talk like that in that uh in that little um Documentary that's head, rare right? yeah. for someone to see their whole life and, and, and then execute yeah. the way that they saw it that's yeah. not regular shit yeah. at true. all 
n- the, the rest of us regular people. We got to play it all. We're as we like, go. okay, let me yeah. do this. Let me do that. All right, now I'm doing this. Now right. I'm doing this. But the fact that that man saw his whole life and executed. Yeah. Who no? That's that's a one percentile thing. You hungry yet? I am hungry. You ready for this? I food? smell that food. Yeah, listen, y'all already know Who what time it is. Who did the food is. though? We got private dinner club. They prepared the whole spread back there, so it's your boy Smooth. We got mean to say what? It's cooking up two and five, and we be right back. Let's go. It's our favorite part of the show. That's your favorite. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, chef, what you got cooking? You already know. <laughs> Y'all already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth cooking up two on five. We got me to say what with it still. And listen, we just got blessed. We got some vicious plates right now. We talking short ribs, uh, string bean medley. We, we got some some grilled chicken and the mac and cheese is looking crazy. So shout out to Private Dinner Club for blessing us. You know what I'm saying? Private Dinner Club really be trying to stay private, so he didn't even want to show his face. It's like he cooked <laughs> with a mask on. You don't even know his real name for real. He just comes, puts it down, and he slides. So make sure y'all, you know, look, we're going to put a little link there so y'all can go check out Private Dinner Club. But yeah, it's time. It's the time where we, we pick up them forks. And I was we, telling you, I don't think know, I could continue. Continue to talk and, 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 and eat this and food? Eat. Listen, we Cause when I eat, work. I don't, I don't be chit chatting. I you just jump, eat. jump right into it. Go full, I need a, a prop up. <laughs> I need a prop up food up. <laughs> Listen, I can't eat like that. I don't know how people eat like that. I need like a chair. Then we be table. doing this because you know we go to cookouts. <laughs> you don't get no tables at cookouts. We, we, oh, we I'm gonna make a, a table. We know how to put the thing. Look, like I found the table. I just made it. <laughs> we do that thing like this. Mm. Make the cheese though. Yeah. The string beans. Yeah. They look like I'm they trying to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. I got 15 pounds to lose after I had my baby. Mm. I gained 50 pounds, mm. which I had never been that heavy in my life. Mm. And you know, I'm people be glorifying the snap bag. Everybody don't got the snack bag. <laughs> the I, I didn't even snap. I just SM'd. Like there's no <laughs> snap and then back. It just it like it started and stopped. Mm. And then they were like, "Well, if you breastfeed, I was going to ask you that lies. They say you, they y'all tell lies. All of y'all. I breastfed." Until my baby was four months. And it didn't help with no, it? They had I like mean, the, the breastfeed and help eat up some weight. It it helped some, but I still got, I gained 50 pounds. You still got 15 pounds. It's not go. magic, right. <laughs> breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. So um, I gained 50 pounds. I still have 15. Mm. So I lost all of that. Mm. But I had never been that heavy, period. Mm. So, um, and then I had a really rough delivery too. So I had like a period of recovery afterwards where i had to sit and lay in the bed mm. like i didn't want to i wanted to get up and do stuff the house was a mess the baby you know was home everything was all over the place mm-hmm. but um but yeah i had to like sit and recover a little bit so it i still have the weight to lose so i've been trying to be healthy but i mm-hmm. guess not today <laughs> yeah um so i've been trying to eat right too what i've been doing is eating good all week and then on the weekend yeah. I give myself some rum because, you know, they say you got to set like realistic expectations. And right. I know I'm not going to always eat straight for the rest of my life. Right. So I got to fit it in there. So the weekends is when I tend to, you know, kick back, drink some juice because during the week I only drink water. All right. You know, I try to get a gallon in a day. I've been going to the gym every day during the week if I can. Weekend, let your hair down. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You got to do the water, which I'm not doing well. <laughs> and you got to do the gym, which I'm not doing at all. And the thing about it is, like, when I had my baby, and I'm sure this is for everybody, like, I took a back seat. Like, everything for me, it just went to the left. Like, mm-hmm. I'm doing my hair, doing my nails, going to the gym. Like, everything just became not important because everything is about the child and making sure the child's together. And right. so I'm still in that weird period where I'm still trying to find that balance to get back of to doing yourself. things for me and, like, things that make me feel good about myself. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, being a great mom to her. So I I don't have, like, a schedule yet. Like, I went and did my hair today only because I was like, I'm doing this today. Mm-hmm. So I asked my mom to watch the baby. Otherwise, I would have her right now. Right. I wouldn't be at the salon <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting hair my done. hair done. I would be with my baby. So mm. I'm still trying to find that balance. Um, and I'll get there. You know, it doesn't happen fast. It's only been eight months. Right. 
So um, I remember like the first couple of months. 17 I, I, more years to go. Right. No, their whole life. I'm not That's even that parent. Yeah. I'll be every, there every day like, hello. <laughs> so um, I saw something on TikTok today about like all the different moms. The you know, the lift, like the cool mom and you know like the um the overbearing mom and the nosy mom i'm like i'm definitely gonna be the mom that's there all the time like you good what you need <laughs> okay let's get it together where, where we going what we doing she's gonna be spoiled i think so too but i hope not like my mother the way she raised me mm -hmm. is like she gave us everything that she could mm -hmm. but i wasn't spoiled so i still understood you have to work hard for certain things. Fact. And I think that's the best thing, because if you give too much and they don't understand the value mm -hmm. of what you're giving, they may not understand how hard you have to work in mm -hmm. order to get certain things. So I think my mother did a good job where I never wanted from anything, mm -hmm. but she also was like, okay, well, if you want something that I feel like is not a necessity and it's something that you want, you can go and get a job and get it done. Mm -hmm. I had to kind of do that with my kids because my kids was going to private school, Catholic school, and they really just started to think like money grew on trees. Right. Like, you know, when they get older, they start asking for, you know, they got kids going to school in Balenciaga. I was just going to say that. But, the kids now is different. They asking for Balenciagas. When I was a kid, I'm like, can I get some Air Force Ones? Yeah, the all sneaker. white dogs. Like, they asking for, I was like, I wouldn't, I didn't even know what a Balenciaga was at that age. Listen, it's crazy out here. And the crazy part is that the kids in school, they, you know, kids lie. Kids tell us lie. They, you know, they telling each other like they bought these Balenciagas. You so you think this kid sitting in high school, but he got a thousand dollars to go spend on sneakers? Uh huh. Come on. Right. Like, come on. Y'all not using your brain. I'm like, they parents working for that. They doing all that. And I'm like, and I'm not gonna do it. I'm not sending you to school and paying your tuition and then sending you a thousand dollars. I'm not no. doing that either. I'm like, you want that? Then you do, go get it. Yeah, go work for it. Get yeah. it. Get your money up. So. They, they always find themselves trying to do something, to, you know, hustle up some money to do what they want to do. Like, my daughter, she does bacon. Like, she likes to make uh, cake pops and That's how it should that. be, yeah. And she sell it at school. You got to learn how to work for what you want. You right. want this, put your time in. Grind up. Yeah. I tell them all the time, you should start now. Yeah. I'm like, y'all in the perfect age where you got social media. Right. So it's like, we ain't you had this You can sell anything then. on yeah. there, right. You could build a whole legacy right now. You could start right now on mm -hmm. your future. Like, back they, then, we had to figure everything out from a muscle. You know what I mean? I worked at Models for $5.25. That's crazy. <laughs> I was selling sneakers for $5.25. Now you can't even get a fucking uh, 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 um, a sandwich or a hoagie from, <laughs> from the damn poppy store for $5. I, I worked for a whole hour. A whole hour, a whole hour for that to sandwich. make that. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, the times is definitely different. Yeah. It's crazy out here. But, um. So I know that you you got your own show now. You also got a podcast. Yeah. And what's the name of your podcast? The Mina's House Podcast. The Mina's House Podcast. We well before the pandemic, we literally would record in my house. Okay. And so, then obviously the pandemic changed things up, so we started doing Zoom. Mm hmm. Mm. Ooh, that mac that and cheese is good. <laughs> <laughs> that was real. But um. So what made you uh, go to podcast route? What made you decide to, you know, step in the game? You know, I was I had like a little podcast when I was at Power Ninety Nine, but it wasn't like um, like the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Only because obviously my on air show was the most important thing. Okay. So the podcast was more so like any guests that I wanted to do that I couldn't get on air. Because remember I said it was all like you everybody has to agree and right. you know you it's like a team effort yeah yeah mm -hmm. we used to have meetings and talk about yes we want this person no we don't mm -hmm. if i got if i got outvoted it doesn't matter what i thought right so um i started to use the podcast as a way to like do people that i couldn't get on air mm -hmm. and then when i left i was like i still used it for that same thing i just renamed it All right so um it was basically like anything that I didn't do on the radio. I didn't feel like fit on the radio. Right. Um, a maybe, place where you could be yourself, like fully, fully let right. loose and give the world everything of you. Right. Like we had a we had an interview with Sukiana. Oh, that's dope. And now Sukiana got a song with Afro B, so she's getting more radio love. But back then, try telling people you want to interview Sukiana on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and she she is funny, but she curses up a storm. Yeah. Like. She was very entertaining. She was like our favorite interviewee, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's like 
not always something you could do on that medium. Right. Now that she got a song, it's different. Now, yes. Yeah. But imagine if radio interviewed all the the media, you know, re reality TV show stars. We have to talk to everybody because mm -hmm. so many of them. Yeah. So I think I need to reach out to my guy, Ugly Nova. I, I know you be tapping in, so hook me up, man. We need Suki to slide through. Yeah, she's she funny as shit, thing. man. But I like her new song. It's hot. That, that song Casamigos? Is a good, yeah. Casamigos. Yeah. Uh, uh, Casamigos. That's my like shit. Pour it in my cup. Yeah. <laughs> Casamigos. That's your heart. But I'm I, like, she did that one. Right. She got one. Well, Afro B got the ear, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, but when I interviewed her on my podcast, she didn't have a song. Right. So that the radio was playing. So it's just an opportunity for me to talk to those people. And in a, in a different setting. Like, I remember I spoke to D-Ray Davis mm, when cool. he first, uh, when we first saw him on Snowfall. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a situation where I could probably bring him on the radio and talk about that because the show is over. Right. So it's like, you know, with the radio, it's like, it's limited time. So you have to be very, you know, mostly it's supposed to be for music. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody who's not music, it's like they have to bring some sort of value. Mm. Obviously, it has to be like a big show. Let me say that. Right. So or it has to be someone local yeah. in my case. So like if there's a local artist, like I talked to TJ Adams, he's uh, from Philly, mm -hmm. from North Philly. He played ODB in the Wu-Tang series. So um, that, he's from he North from Philly. Philly. He's from North Philly. I think I did hear that. That's Crazy. I had him on the radio because of that. Right. Now, had he not been from North Philly, why am I, I don't, why am I randomly going to have, uh, you know, show, right? Uh, because think about it. If I do him, I got to do everybody. And right. it's like, we're there for music. Mm -hmm. And that's what people forget. I'm there for music. Mm. So primarily, all my interviews are music related. But if it's not, it got to make sense. Right. So why, why does this person make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, he's from North Philly. That's why. Okay, that's why cool. I work, yeah. Otherwise, I would have to have everybody on that series the whole on. Gang, yeah. Not everybody's watching that show. Yeah. Like I watch the show. I think the show is fire. The but show look, is super fire. look. Have you watched the show? Yes. Have you watched the show? Have you watched the show? Don't say yes. Y'all watch the Wu Tang. Y'all oh, watch yeah, the Wu Tang. All, right. all of y'all. Okay, so this yeah. is a different room. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is, because we love music, so you right. Know we're but this up. is a different room. But you go out in the world everybody and ask everybody, yeah. yo, um, you know, did you watch the Wu Tang series? They'll, you maybe, you know, eighty yeah. percent will say, I don't know what the right. percentage is. It ain't like power, but it's, a, it's an acquired taste. Right, but mm -hmm. then even so, but you ask everybody, do you know who, you know, Chris Brown is? They know. They say yes. Do you mm -hmm. know who Jasmine Sullivan is? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's really how you do the test of does this person belong here? Okay. And what, like, my, my program director says, the who gives a fuck factor? That's what he calls it. <laughs> like, who gives a fuck about this? That's dope, though. Is this that's something that you like? Out. Is this someone that everybody in the room is going to like? Like, you got to really try to decipher who gives a fuck about this and why should I not play their favorite song mm -hmm. to have this person talk? Right. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So TJ's from North Philly. That makes sense. This North Philly guy is on a major show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I had TJ Adams on. And he's um, super creative. Like, he played that part. Yeah, yeah, he like, is. He really embodied the role of uh, ODB on a crazy I really level. feel a lot. Of, I see a lot of, I don't know ODB, but from what we've seen. Right. I feel like there's a lot of similarities yeah, in their like, character. Yeah, he, he, he did it like, man, like he was there. Like, he, he I said that, that to him. He was like, you think? I was like, <laughs> yeah. The voice, the mannerisms. Yeah, the yeah. Way he he carried really, himself. You know what I mean? Like, he really. That's he really his big that first joint. big acting role. He told me he got something all called Fells High, which is filmed yeah. right here in Fells High yeah. with Omari Hardwick coming. Yeah. So, um, so I did him. So it's like, that's really like, I, I'm able to put that on the radio. But had I not been able to put him on the radio, I would be like, yo, come on my podcast because I think you're dope. Right. So it's a way to still like create that connection, network with that person, talk to them about their life, and then build that relationship. Should I then need to come? Like now, I've interviewed Sukiana, so I got to call her and be like, yo, come. Like we already have that relationship. And it isn't like I'm hopping on like everybody else just because right. you're hot right now. Right. Like, no, I actually had interest in you before, in you right, before you became hot. Right. Same thing with Drizzy P. We were just talking about Drizzy P. I had him 
on. I seen it. Yeah, I seen it. And he's on he's it, from Broomall, actually. Right. He's from Broomall, and um, he's opening up for Lil Wayne. Yeah. And Wayne really supports him and like fucks with him. You know. He signed to Lil Wayne. Right, but like yeah. now everybody's starting to know about him. So now everybody's. <laughs> but I interviewed him before, so it's like it's just building those organic relationships. Mm -hmm. So you not only you not just coming on board when you hot when you're hot. Right. When everybody else is coming on board, like no, I, I Mina was was there before all this even and happened I, for I me. I think that's what the, that's what we missing. Like I don't think like my whole push right now, even with the show, is like I'm just so against the way people like to wait till you all the way there. Like you can recognize when somebody got potential. People don't do and that. You can recognize when they working, and then you can still appreciate and show them love while they in that working stage. You don't gotta wait till everybody else is recognize them to then be like, oh yeah, I've been watching you. I was watching you since then. Why you didn't help me along and show that love? I, I could have used that, you know what I mean? But you gotta understand, it takes for people to actually have vision and courage. And a lot of people don't have the courage to come out and say something that's hot without everybody else's without, approval. Mm -hmm. We live in this world where people need approvals from others, they need likes, they need, you know, they need comments, they need people to like, you know, like hype them up. Right. You know, and it's like, there's nothing wrong with that, but what I'm saying is, you have to have enough confidence in your ideas mm -hmm. and the things that you like in order to support them and advocate for them before everybody else does. Right. Because everybody else is not going to see what you see. They're not going to see it at and all. They, but you have to have the courage and the confidence to and, and, and to, to, to do that when nobody else is doing it. Yeah, and a lot of people fact. don't have that. People are scared to go out and say something that they might be wrong about. You know, you know how many times I've said something... And it maybe it don't. Oh, this is the next one, or this is the next artist, or this is the next hot song. And it may not play. And out it like may that. not play out. But then there are the songs that do play out. Right. So it's a gamble. So it's about like being just okay being with okay with there. what you like, yeah. right? Like this is what I like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is what I think it is. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But at least I, you know, I I I talked about something that I really like naturally believe in. Right, right. And uh, that's a fact. So how do you feel about radio in its current state? Like, you think like, I, I feel like Breakfast Club changed a lot of things the way radio is approached now. Like even when it come down to having shows, it's not about like just getting on radio. And then that's it, like even Cosmic Cab or you yourself, like how you had Drizzy come up there. Now it's like footage, it's behind the scenes. It's, right. You know what I mean? It's more intricate. And radio is damn near like small shows, mm -hmm. each one. And how you feel about that? I think radio has changed. Um, I think it's started to become more digital and it has to be. Mm -hmm. To your point, it's not just about the radio anymore. It's about the behind the scenes, you know, the, the other things. Like when I had Drizzy come on, he obviously didn't do a freestyle on the radio. Mm, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. we did a behind the scenes like freestyle where his freestyle is behind the scenes. So radio has had to evolve because of all the digital stuff going on, shows like this, mm -hmm. you know, where they have to provide behind the scenes content and, you know, maybe do podcasts on the side or, mm -hmm. you know, like even with The Breakfast Club, you their interviews are chopped up and kind of like... Um, uh, reposted in so many different ways and by repost I don't just mean on social media but they're kind of like repurposed right. for all the different ways that you could consume the breakfast club mm -hmm. so it's the primary thing is the brand that they have then they have the interviews right mm -hmm. so you might go and watch the interviews on YouTube that's how you interact with them you may not even listen to the radio show right so that's one leg that wasn't there before. It wasn't before. It just used to be you crack the mic, and that's what it is. Because everybody was listening to you on the mic. Mm. But now, since everybody's not listening to you on the mic, you have to really distribute your your content in all these different avenues. So, mm. YouTube is one of them. Maybe you do listen to the radio. You listen to the edited version of the you know interview on the radio. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't listen to radio. Maybe you listen to podcasts. Well, now that audio is available on. SoundCloud right. on you know Spotify Apple Music, Apple music. Right. so it's the same thing they didn't do four different jobs yeah. but it's being used in these different avenues where you can find that that content right mm -hmm. so 
You might get it on Spotify or Apple Music. You might get it on YouTube. This person might be listening on the radio. Maybe the, this Gen, what is it, Gen X, Gen Y? Mm -hmm. They don't list. They don't consume none of that. They on TikTok, <laughs> yeah. right? They don't do none of that, right? At least we will go to YouTube. We go to, YouTube, we go yeah. to yeah. They not. They go on TikTok, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's like okay, now their clips of their interviews are on TikTok and Instagram. So right there, that's what radio is. Mm. All of the the central nucleus of all of that mm -hmm. is radio, not so that's how radio has had to evolve. Right. Whereas before it was just the you radio. Right the air, now you got to right. make sure now it's content driven. Right. There you so go. now you create content, and radio is one of the ways that you deliver in the content to people. Mm -hmm. But now you have to also make that content available on these other on things. Other so platforms. when I was evaluating myself as a radio personality, like I'm like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Well, I do. I'm on two different channels. I'm on two different stations. Mm -hmm. I'm on Sirius XM and I'm on 100.3 in Philly. So I make sure most of my interviews are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you can go on my YouTube and listen to that. But then I also have my podcast right. where you can hear not necessarily that same stuff because remember, I work for these companies. Right. So I don't own that audio. So I can't take the audio and then and put, put it, it to that because I don't own it. Right. So right. I create my own content with Sukiana and D-Ray Davis and Skip Marley and all the other people I've interviewed on my podcast. Yeah. And now you can find me there. You know, so it's like now when you go and you can find my content on social media, you know, and on TikTok, on Instagram, I put clips up all the time. Right. So it's like anywhere you go, you can find my content. You mm -hmm. can stream my content. You can watch it on YouTube or you can just w watch it on social media. So me as a brand, I've in addition to how radio has expanded, I've had to expand myself and making sure that. My content is at all of these all the places, places where, where yeah. people, different people will go. Right. Like, I remember when all of this first started happening, you know, and it happened during the pandemic. I think our listening kind of really changed during the pandemic because our schedules changed, when we were going to work changed, when we were in the car changed. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, all of that changed. So I remember at, at my job, they gave us like a, a pie chart. Mm. And they said... X amount of people listen to radio. X only get their content from social media. X still watch the news. Mm -hmm. You know, X get everything from YouTube. So it had the breakdown of different people according to their lifestyle and where, and them, where they would get their different, not only just news, but music, right. content. You know, like the kids don't get, they don't listen to the radio for, mu excuse me, for music. Mm -hmm. They go on TikTok. Yeah. They're like, that's the TikTok. So if song. you want to reach them, you know, you got to put content here. You want to reach this right. amount of, or kind of people. You right, reach right. You meet so it's here. like really understanding that like, okay, these everybody listens a different way. And we got to be there wherever they listen. And that's kind of how radio has had to evolve. evolve and not so much like the music aspect, because now you can get music anywhere. But now it's like you creating a brand, creating content that's available right. in many different spaces. That's why you have all these radio companies now, like, we do podcasts. Right, know? yeah. Everybody. Everybody's going like, to do it. It's, it's, I think at this point, it's becoming like whatever craft you have, you can further promote that craft or, you know what I mean, Make help yourself stand out by giving them a podcast because you could build a relationship with the people that watch and now they personally are invested in you so now they invest in the brand and they, they might buy your products or whatever support right. your show stuff like that it's the same thing with selling something like you got to yeah. be where the customer is that's what they tell right. you in business 101 go where the customer is mm -hmm. so it's like okay are you getting foot traffic no so how do i go where the customer is well maybe i started a website mm -hmm. okay i started my website i went on shopify and uploaded all my stuff i'm still not selling every well wh wh why aren't you selling it on instagram you know now they got where the picture pops up and a little dot pops up and it tells you what it is and how much it <laughs> yeah, is right that's go crazy. to where your customer is if right. you're not doing that you're not gonna win right no i expect so um how does i always wonder like how does like syndication work when it comes to being on radio so you could be on radio in philly and then still get that same station in other places yeah so because everything is so interconnected it's really just like it's as easy as 
flipping a switch, really. Mm. It's just like, hey, you know, we're going to send these this show down there. And it's the same music. and The same thing, but just in another region. Yeah. Another place. Some stations, they play their own music. And then what will end up happening is you just end up getting, like, the talk the talk from portion okay. from the show and those then you'll just get it like I, okay so I, i'll put you on you ever be listening to the radio especially on a morning show and then you just hear them cut to like the middle of their conversation steve harvey's show does this a lot okay and it's like they never started yeah. they never said hey this is a steve Mar Marty morning uh, steve harvey morning show whatever whatever they never began Right. talking because that's how you're supposed to begin talking like on the radio intro, yeah. but it's just like they're in the middle of the conversation it's because he's uh, somewhere else mm -hmm. doing his show and they maybe are in commercials in a different time or maybe they're playing music at a different time mm -hmm. so you're literally just taking that feed and, and right broadcasting the feed to where you are okay. so maybe their commercials were eight minutes but your commercial in your station was 10 minutes. Mm. So now there's that two minutes of difference. So now you missed that little So part now you missed the first two minutes. So that's why when you turn on and it's like Shirley Strawberry's in the middle of her letter, you're like, well, damn, yeah. what happened to the first part of the letter? It's because they're syndicated mm. and that's where they had to catch it, depending on whatever techni technical thing was happening mm. behind the scenes. So some of them are like that. Some of them are, they send you the, 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 the talk breaks. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of plot it in okay. in between the music. So yeah. it kind of depends on how the show is structured and how live, live it is. Like, the Steve Harvey show is live, live, whereas, like, all you got to do is take the feed. And if it doesn't match up with your commercial length or right. if it doesn't match up, you just got to try to make it work. Just make it work. Yeah. yeah. And even if do. it cuts stuff off, you know, it, it just... I mean, it is. It sounds terrible, but if you kind of get the gist of what they're talking about, if you keep listening, yeah, you listen, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. So, um, when it comes to the podcast, like it's like so, so many podcasts, it's like almost like a race at this point. When you, especially being in radio, like, are you working to try to push your podcast to try to be like the top podcast, or is this just something that you just? You just want to give your fans and just kind of share your experiences and invite the people you like. You know, a more of a personal thing. I kind of ask myself that question, too, because I'm the kind of person like if I do something, I'm going to do it to the fullest of its ability. Mm. Right now, I think that I have so many different shows that it's almost like that's just something more to add. Right. Mm. Like, again, you have to be where the consumer is. So right. I have to have some part of my show that's on a streaming platform. Otherwise, I'm missing out on those people. Those customers, yeah. Right, like learning about me. Or maybe some of these people don't even know I'm on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like they now can learn, you know, about me via this, you know, this, right, this streaming. Connection. Right, So for me, it's not like because I have two other shows it's not like I'm in a situation where it has to be my main thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just an offering for like extra behind the scenes. Right. Like a lot of the times, like something will happen on air and then I'll talk about it there, mm. you know, like more in depth or maybe if there's like a topic that we're talking about on air, we can't talk about it forever. I got to get in and out, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, I can't talk that long on the radio. Yeah, I, I'm, this is not a talk show. It, we got to play music. Right. So if I have something that I really feel like needs like that conversation of like, you need to have something long, like a longer conversation, right. longer than what I can do on the radio. That's what the podcast that's what is there for. It so it's just another outlet. It's not like I'm trying to make that like the biggest thing ever. But you want to have it as a backup in case you have to. Right. You know, in case, like, there's so many different avenues for a podcast. Like, like with the Roots Picnic, you see the podcast stage now. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to not exclude yourself from those opportunities. Facts. You know, but, like, Gilly and Wallow, they don't have a radio show. They have a podcast. So they put everything into that podcast. Right. So it kind of depends on what you have to offer. Like, I have two radio shows and a podcast so obviously i'm not gonna it's not gonna be like all in with my podcast right. maybe life shifts yeah one just, day it just adds to right. everything it's pieces to your puzzle that's exactly your puzzle it. is a little different yeah. their puzzle is just all podcasts yeah so that's what they go by and yours is like you're gonna get me on the radio right right my two shows and still add this to it right that's so dope. and like serious xm is like so cool because we do a lot of live performances mm -hmm. so i get that aspect of like a live concert kind of like we had coco jones on 
and she was she singing. Nice. Oh man, she was incredible. Nice. We had a live audience. It's cool. Like every outlet gives me like something different that I can do. You right. know, like I get to be more involved in like live performances and you know dealing with the audience and you know like on that on that platform right. on 100.3 we do concerts so I can get to host concerts you know and mm. uh, I do radio interviews and you know I get to talk to more local people mm -hmm. so that's a different side of it and at SiriusXM it's a national platform so mm. there's certain people I just can't talk to on that platform because they're not a national brand Right. so it's like I get to do a little bit of everything that I love with these different like avenues mm -hmm. so with the podcast it unless i one day don't have radio shows i don't see that being as like the main thing the main you thing. know it's yeah. kind of just something for you to find me somewhere yeah that's super dope mm -hmm. listen i appreciate you coming i don't want to hold you up no longer um let everybody know how they could tap into the podcast to your other radio show they already know to find you at 100.3 to be, oh, what is it, 100.3? R&B. Yeah, it's been they all be everything. Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm on Monday through Friday, 100.3 R&B. And then um, I'm on 10 a.m. to 2, to 3, 10 a.m. to 3. And then on Sirius XM, I'm on every night on The Heat. It's a hip-hop and R&B channel. And I'm on Monday through Friday. And I'm on on the weekends as well, but I'm doing like a countdown on the weekends. <laughs> But every okay, night okay. I'm on there, it's called Mina's House. Then you can check out my podcast on any of your streaming platforms, Mina's House Podcast. And my website, MinaSayWhat.com. Everything you need to know about me is, like, right there. Social media, obviously, at Mina Say What. So just tap in. I'm everywhere where you are, okay? <laughs> right. TikTok, Instagram, Meet all Meet them that. where they at. Gotta be where they at. <laughs> you gotta meet them where they at. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the food. Yeah, I didn't finish because... We about to, you know, I, they, you they know when the cameras you cut. Are, listen, I went through one napkin. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the kind of person I go through like 10 napkins. Yeah, because you keep wiping your hands. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I went through one napkin. I, I think that's enough for now. Now I can go through the other five yeah. napkins. Then we about to get into it. So yeah. y'all already know what's up. It's your boy Smooth. We got me to say what? It's cooking up two on five, the best podcast in Philly. Let's go. Yeah.